Josh Norman is special in more ways than one. Go ahead, young man. You do your thing. He is brash. He's so and doing shit. Bold, eccentric. He is also a lifelong movie fan who channels iconic silver screen heroes in his play Between the Lines. And in 2015, Josh Norman's character work led the former supporting actor to a starring role on the league's biggest stage. And that's why they think this guy's the next great cornerback in the NFL. You know, we're sitting here in a movie theater, which is fitting for someone like you because you're a huge movie buff. And I'm always curious when I sit down with guys who love movies. What is it like for you? For me, it's the, the total experience. Like, I have to be all psyched out for it, going into it. Um, even the chair's got to be right. <laughs> yeah. Well, you came into Carolina as a fifth round pick and you had to really fight your way through some things there. What changed from your second year to last season when you became an all-pro defensive back? Well, really, that third year, I would want to say it was better than my four. <laughs> and I didn't get that much pub because we wasn't racking off wins like that. My fourth year, I played 16 straight games instead of playing 12 or 13 that I did my third year. I was turning interceptions with touchdowns. And everybody opened their eyes to, oh, who is this kid from Carolina now? Even before you were intercepting passes and returning for touchdowns, you got into a pretty well-publicized fight with uh, your quarterback. You have two big egos on the same team, and they're football players. Something gonna happen. <laughs> and it just ended up happening in training camp, and both of our competitive fires was high that day, and that's what you saw. Jumped up, intercepted by Norman. Josh Norman comes up with a huge, huge interception. You talk about the dominance you had in that season. I think at one point during the first 12 weeks, the passer rating for quarterbacks, they would have been better off throwing the ball in the dirt than throwing in your direction. First quarter of the season has been an endless Josh Norman highlight reel, hasn't it? When you hear that kind of statistic, what do you think about it? Gosh, yes, one up. All the other DBs can't say that. But you can, my friend, you can. What do you think separates you from other cornerbacks in this league? Physicality. No substitution for it. The mindset. The dog, man. Savage, raging dog. I want to be a Jack Tatum as a freaking cornerback, you know? <laughs> we going to play this game how it's supposed to be played. Straight physical. If you don't want to see it, turn the channel. This is what I'm going to give to you. Straight four quarters, <laughs> whether you like it or not, man. I want to throw some names out to you. I want to get your reaction when you hear that these names. The first one would be Mike Evans. Wow, that guy. I know. Put my boxing gloves on because it's going to be a fight. <laughs> Julio Jones. Hey, it's going to be that kind of game? Great competitor. He brings out a competitive fire in me to be the best I can be on the field that day. Des Bryant. Des is streaky, man. Streaky guy. You catch one, you're gonna catch four. Four turns into eight quick. He gets it, he builds up momentum. And finally, you can imagine the last one is a mess. <laughs> <laughs> and another fight breaks out. Odell Beckham. I don't know, he's a dancing machine. That's all I got for him. <laughs> Dances everywhere. Knowing your story and what you fought for within the Carolina Panthers organization, it seemed like you were gonna be a lifetime Carolina guy and then two months later, all of a sudden, the news breaks that they rescinded the franchise tag. How did you react when you heard that news? And the crazy part about it is, I didn't get no phone call or nothing. I had to hear it from an agent. Jeez, like, I had to call them. There were some explanations given on their part as for why things went the way they did. Dave Gettleman, the general manager, said they wanted players who were all in. My chips is all in or anything I do if I'm there. I'm just not gonna sell myself any shorter than the next. Well, it didn't take you long to find somebody who, who loved what you brought to the table. How quickly did you know Washington was the place you wanted to be? 
took like two minutes to hit me up. <laughs> you gotta understand, you gotta take a, a trip back. Like I never had the whole high school you know, one recruit thing. And now once I got freedom, <laughs> man, was it ever great to feel wanted and loved upon. And you saw it, it was just like, man, these guys right here are, are, are truly all in on Josh Norman. Um, I wanted to be the highest paid corner because my work dictated. That's what my numbers dictated, and they made it happen. And plus, it was the NFC East. <laughs> Games on prime time. <laughs> like, the stage is set. The stage is set. And Norman, one of the league's larger-than-life personalities, is not one to shy away from the spotlight. We don't fly today. We not get trash bags. We get travel bags. Coming up, we take a look at how Norman a world-class movie fan takes his love of cinema to a whole new level on the football field. I have to let him know, man, are you not entertained? Like, this is not what you wanted? This is not why we are here? <laughs> Who is the best player in the NFL at your position? Myself. He competes hard against everybody that, he, that lines up against him. He has a will to win. He can read your eyes better than anybody else, man. You can't second guess yourself when you're throwing his way. Winston, the darter intercepted. He gets no bigger than this, man. If I was to play against Josh Norman, I wouldn't get off the line, probably crap my pants. You like to get into characters when you're playing the game. Where did that process come from? It really took off in high school, like big time. Braveheart was one of the first movies that it really took off with. We went from that to Gladiator to 300. I started to develop those characters and brought it up into the NFL ranks. Turn up, turn up, turn up. Oh, no, 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 no. Hey, man, it's gonna oh, be no, a no. day, man. What's the process you go through when you're developing a character for a particular game? Well, it all depends on who I'm facing that week. Um, I see an opponent and I kind of read up on them and, and dissect them a good bit. And I put all that into a, a bucket of my notes, and I don't really know who I'll play until the night before the game. I have my collection and ended up, okay, this is it. Pick it out, put it in, and watch it. And I wake up that next morning, totally zoned, locked into that character, man. Hey, come on now. You can't push off now every time. Come on now. It's that freshness, man. And it's always about, you know, having that flair of fun and dramatics. Is that what it does for you? I look at it as, for me, something else more that I can put into my game. Just going out there and doing something and, and playing it becomes boring if you don't add something to it. Spice it up just a little bit. Put some, you know, season salt on it. <laughs> Go out there and, and, and make it fun and enjoyable for the fans. If we get them a show, it's just like modern day gladiators. Well, I've heard that you can go to some dark places sometimes. Hey, the disrespect, I hope you feel it. It's real. Gonna be that kind of game? What is that about? Oh, you ain't gonna talk to me now? No! I knew that was coming a mile away. I smell that like a rat. It all depends on what I'm being faced with. That dark place don't really come out until someone brings it out of me. It rarely happens, but when it do happen, it's just like this uncontrollable rage. Well, you also will go even a step further than just watching a movie and going to character. You'll actually recite lines from the characters. <laughs> and I'm curious as to some of the more clever lines you come up with to throw at people. Peasant throwing rocks at a giant. <laughs> where, where's that from? <laughs> from Transformers. OK. Optimus Prime. Mm -hmm. No longer Megatron is illegal. <laughs> but we still have Optimus Prime games. We got this big screen, might as well take advantage of it. I want to go through some of the characters you've gone into and how much that role playing helped you. Week four, why Maximus for this game? I had to, I had to win the crowd. I had to become something more than I was. Winston, a darter intercepted, and it may be a touchdown. He saw the play all the way. I had to. Let them know, man, are you not entertained? Like, this is not what you wanted? This is not why we are here? <laughs> Week 12, primetime Thanksgiving, you against Des Bryant of the Dallas Cowboys in Dallas. And it's time for Leonidas to show up from 300. 
300 did come out, I did not bring it out unless it's a big time special moment in game. And this was one of those games. What did Des bring out in you that made you go to Leonidas? Before the game, he was talking cash money trash to all my DBs. Then he was calling me out like, where's your boy? And they came back and they told me all this stuff. I was like, he did not just say that. I didn't want to hear anything else from nobody. I shut it down, got into my own little world, and I went to that dark place. Josh Norman, wow. This is the main event. What was the character you had in mind for Odell Beckham Jr.? Well, I had the Dark Knight shoes on. I mean, he had the whole Joker stuff going, so he knew what it was. Well, you were in Gotham, too. We were in Gotham. So at what point in this game did you know this was going to be a battle? Not how much of a battle it was until, you know, the extra in this started. Oh, and Odell Beckham Jr., he's going to get flagged again. Get him out of the game. He's out of control. Dad, come on, man. Uh, it, I, it, it was a lot of that going Is this dark place for you? Is this no, as dark I, as it gets? Really, trust me, if it would have gotten as dark as it gets, I wouldn't have been in the game. Do you have any new characters that you're working on? See, I don't know, because when you start to add more characters, you start to water down the other ones. Your movie array starts to become larger, and I like to keep it compact to the straight, just warrior movies. But I don't know. If I was to add Wolverine, I was thinking you might that go there. would be a killer. Like, that game, <laughs> I'll probably be ejected for it, so I don't know if I want to go that far. <laughs> Up next, Norman, the actor. Jim, you have to talk to me. We take a look at the origins of his character work and how a class at Coastal Carolina paved the way. Josh landed in my acting class in fall of 2008. He was wide open, ready to work, ready to be a star. I'm Josh Norman, cornerback from Washington Redskins, and I'm here to reach my goals. From becoming characters like Maximus, Leonidas, and Batman, Josh Norman has put a fresh spin on the concept of role play. Although Norman's act is new to the NFL, he has been an actor as long as he's been alive. You have a saying, uh, I think it's different strokes. I'm not sure. Well, Garrett Coleman, how he used to talk about, he used to say, what you talking about, Willis? He would do that a lot. He'd poke out his lips, stretch his eyes wide, and just fold his arms and be mad. <laughs> and in school, the class clown. The <laughs> teacher would call me, Miss Norman. <laughs> she couldn't even hardly talk because she was laughing so hard. She said, uh, Josh here looking like Mr. T. <laughs> He didn't want all my jury to school because <laughs> he liked dressing up. It was always something. He never discussed much about his acting ambitions, but I knew that he was a good actor because every time we was younger and we would get into an altercation, I was always the one guilty. Even if I didn't do anything, he would make it seem like I did exactly what he was saying. So I would say he always kind of had that, that trait. Josh landed in my acting class in fall of 2008. He was a diamond in the rough with this twinkle in his eye. He was wide open, ready to work, ready to be a star. Ladies, will you care to join Allison, Ashley, Wendell? I heard the vacation spots are world class. One of the things that athletes and actors have in common is, is impulse work, that they can move and think like that without having to process and, and lose any momentum. He declared theater as a major, which was more of a pre-professional program for theater majors. Josh landed with us. He soon found out that he could not be a theater major and play football. When football became front and center, that was kind of the end of any kind of performance acting classes at that time. Norman's love of football and acting would reach a crossroads at Coastal Carolina and football would seize the day. But Josh eventually merged his love of acting with his passion for football. 
And that combination would be a driving force in him becoming the player he is today. The thrill. I think the thrill of being something else other than yourself. Going out there and putting on a show, because that's pretty much what it is. A show, giving the crowd their money was worth, coming in and pay for a price of a mission ticket. I think that's the biggest thing I get a, a thrill out of. I definitely do believe by him getting into a different character, as he would say. Uh, they're all mortals and he's immortal. He just feel like he's mortal. He just feel like he, he's transitioned out of his body into another body. He really get into that type of zone. Some people may think it's weird, uh, way out of the box, but that's Josh. That's who he is. The field as a stage can be a cliche to many, many people. But to Josh, it takes on a deeper meaning. It is his stage. It just happens to be green. And although most of the acting Josh does is between the white lines these days, he still hasn't fully given up on his dreams of movie stardom, as he co-starred in the short film Shift earlier this year. So Josh played a, a psychologist who in the future, instead of, instead of prescribing uh, medicines, he prescribes the use of a technology you wear on your head to calm you down. What Josh does is he helps the lead character in the, in the film to move through a life where he's trying to escape his life by using all these technologies to a point where he starts living his life. It was cool um, just being able to, you know, play a character different than myself and enjoy that and, and be in that moment and, you know, work with the guys that was on set and pretty much play a, a different role than myself. I felt like he was just one of the actors. It felt like he, he understood, he, he prepared, he followed the director's roles. He fed off the energy of the other people. Gene, you have to talk to me. Natural, how can I say? He has a knack for it. From traveling the globe to keeping company with the rich and famous, life has been good for Josh Norman this past year. Coming up, we see just how good. It's about to go down. Like you guys, I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs> nah, man. But this suit is it's pretty cool. This is my first shoot with Adidas. Today, she getting the first hand look at what we're doing. Who is going to wear this? <laughs> Somebody gotta come explain this to me. Wardrobe lady. What is this gonna be worn with? <laughs> I'm like, Ned Stark from Game of Thrones. Like, behead someone. <laughs> I was worn with a suit. I don't know. It seems like we're about to run out of time. It's about to go down. Here we go, go ahead. Massive energy. Come right here to the camera. Good time. Nice. Here we go, go dude. They're going to have a hard job. Pick it which one you want. We start talking about celebrity and superstardom. Like, what does this feel like for you? Big. This is my first one during this shoot. I did one um, later in the fall that, you know, was out in Portland. But here now, Doing it with all the athletes coming to the shoot is, is respect. You know, you kind of did something good in your sport. How has your life changed since last year, since becoming an all-pro and having a, a bigger profile? My life has changed so much to where, you know, nobody don't know me until now. They're saying my name on songs. So <laughs> it's kind of cool. If you came out to here last year to L.A. and walked around, how many people do you think would have recognized you? Some people would have who's really avid football fans, but others who's just casual fans and just, you know, watch the games on Sundays just because they own. Um, now they will be like, okay, well, dang, that's Josh Norman right there. Before, they wouldn't have probably no clue. And I could just walk up in any restaurant or walk on the street and be like chilling. Now I gotta pick my times. <laughs> I gotta pick and choose. Well, let me ask you this. Humble beginnings, you work for everything you got. How much did that prepare you for this stage you're on today? I think it's everything. But for me, it all began with God, La Familia, football. 
Um, I continue to have that goal and each and every day, man. Every morning I wake up, I hit the ground, pray, go grind. It's come back, do the same thing, put it on repeat. And that's how, you know, we, we get to where we are. So you've got the Adidas shoot, got a new contract and a new team. When you thought about the way your career was going to progress and what you wanted, could you have imagined it being like this? Well, in a sense, I could. I could see that once I got past the hurdles and the obstacles that I was faced with, when me and God was on the same page, he was gonna unleash some things for me. And did I actually know it was it to this magnitude? No, I think it's still more out there. Still more to be done. And I haven't even reached or tapped into that other part of it. And I wanna see what that looks like. So I'm gonna keep working. I'm gonna keep driving until I get to that point, man. And I can't stop and wait to look back and see what I've done and what I've accomplished. Because if I do, I get lost in the progression of what's going on now. You know, you're a big movie guy. You gave me the sequel to Josh Norman's big 2015 season. Mr. Norman goes to Washington.